What's going on guys, Stefan here. Just wanted to make a quick video before heading out and running some errands. So I've been getting a lot of questions from players over Instagram recently, all around the same topic. Most of the questions go like, Stefan, I don't know how to schedule my training sessions. I don't know what to do. I don't know when to do it. I don't feel like I'm getting the most out of it. So I'm here just to share my tips, advice, experience, and help you guys out. I know the channel's been growing a lot recently, so just in case you are new and don't know, I studied exercise and sports science back in college, so all of the information in this video comes from my own education and personal experience training. So I stumbled upon some lectures on YouTube from one of my old professors back in college, Dr. Mike Isertel, who has a PhD in sport physiology. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, highly recommend checking him out. But I'm going to break down some of the aspects he goes over in his college courses to make it easier for you guys to implement into your own training. So we're going to start off with a blank slate. This is the off season. You have all the time in the world to train whenever you want. Where does your individual training with the ball fit in? Where does your gym training, plyometric training, weight training, all that stuff fit in? So how do you fit all these different things into a weekly schedule? First, you want to stagger your days into high intensity, medium intensity, low intensity, or recovery days. So not every day is going to be the same. You're not going to be working for three, four days at a medium intensity, take a day off, work for another three, four days at a medium intensity, take a day off. It's much better to train in these peaks and valleys, these high intensity days, backing it down to a moderate or low intensity, back up to a high intensity, because you get all the benefits of training at that 85, 90% of your maximum intensity while giving yourself time to recover. If you're just working at 50, 60% for four, five, six days a week, are you actually pushing yourself to that point where you are actually improving or are you just stagnating? So an example of a high intensity day for me in the off season would be a double day. The first session would be out on the field with the ball, a little bit longer than usual, probably an hour and a half, two hours, and it would be comprised of more of the intense stuff, the stuff that's gonna get my heart rate high, little rest in between, maybe even some fitness. After I have an intense two hour session, I would take a couple hours off, and then later that day, I would have a gym session. And again, this is a higher intensity day. This gym session would be more comprised of stuff that's more taxing on my body, stuff that would spike my heart rate more like plyometrics and then I would do bigger heavier more compound exercises also and that's a high intensity day three hours of intense work really pushing my body closer to its limits but getting a lot out of it but obviously you cannot train like that every day the following day I would be feeling a bit sore a bit stiff so I'd back off into a more moderate intensity for that day I would still do a double day on this day but I would back off the intensity on everything the first session in the morning would still be out in the field probably a bit shorter but it would focus more on close tight dribbling and more technical work that's not gonna be as taxing. I would then relax for a few hours and then do our more lightweight, body weight, functional training session in the gym in the afternoon. So that's a moderate day. Still going out, still doing stuff, focusing more on the technical stuff though, still getting something out of it, but not taxing my body too much. If it's very early on in the off season and I haven't quite built up that work capacity yet to go out and do another hard day, I would take a look at myself, see how my body's feeling, and then take a light recovery day. And this recovery day would just be very light biking in the gym, foam rolling, stretching, yoga, that kind of stuff to get myself prepared for the following day, which would be a more intense day. As you can see, we're training in peaks and valleys, high intensity all the way back down to low intensity. Like I said before, we do this to promote adaptation in our body. So we have a very intense day or two to promote fitness, strength, whatever it is that you are working on, and then back off the intensity gradually focus more on the technical fine stuff and then promote recovery to then repeat that again. But this also comes down to knowing your own body. If you are somebody who is brand new to the world of uh, individual ball training, fitness, weight training, plyometric training, all that kind of stuff, you will not be able to do the same amount of work as somebody who has been training for years. So if you are all new to this and you try to do something that is way beyond your ability and work capacity, you will push yourself beyond that point of recovery for the following day. So on those intense and moderate days, there is a sweet spot you wanna stay in. You wanna stay below your MRV, which is your maximum recoverable volume, which is basically just the most amount of work you are able to do without pushing yourself beyond and overdoing it but also staying above your MEV, which is your minimum effective volume. So the minimum amount of work you can do to promote adaptation in your body. And again, it all comes down to knowing your own body, knowing how much is too much and how much is not enough. But that's all I got for you today. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. If you did, be sure to leave this video a like, leave a comment down below and subscribe for more videos in the future. Peace.